Welcome to the bar as local. My name is Dan Taylor. Four seconds. It's three seconds. Start again. That was a, that was a three seconds. Once mm-hmm. we get silent. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the bar as local. My name is Danny Taylor. And my name is Thomas Reed. As soon as he finishes his coffee. <sighs> Welcome. But today we're going to be talking about. Uh, running a strength gym business or just running the business in the fitness industry so I've been in business now since 2011 started as a sole trader um, started with a different business name Taylor's Fitness Trainer which you would have known if you listened to our Origins episode it's the first episode when I on episode five five it's going well a bit consistent yeah every week if you're watching us uh, on video we're in a different location now. Um, we've moved the office around. We tried to do this so we could uh, get a third mic to be picked up more clear. And we failed. Yeah, it didn't work. It's exactly the same as when it, the desk was over there. So the only thing that's changed now is the aesthetic. Um, I do feel more comfortable and a bit cosy in this corner though. I don't know about you. Yeah, I don't know. When I walked in here yesterday, I was like, oh, it looks bigger. It, it definitely does look bigger. And you can see we've got the, um, if you are watching, you're watching us, uh, watching this on YouTube or Instagram, Facebook or whatever, we've got um, the shelves and units here as well. So we're going to be putting like, um, I don't know, memorabilia and things, maybe some branded stuff on there. Yeah. Signed photographs from powerlifting legends. Anything signed from world champions. Yeah, we can start with maybe Becky, you come on the show last week. Yeah, yeah. Just Every time we get a guest. Put them on the wall. Good show. And for those of you who have not listened to that episode yet, it's definitely one of our best episodes so far. The sound quality wasn't great because when we've got a third microphone, I don't know whether it's something to do with this room. That but it, it just it just bounces all over the place, doesn't it? Yeah. You need like a soundproof room or something. Mm-hmm. Or like I think there's there are things you can get. Um I was speaking to one of Danny Lee's clients who is a drummer in a band and he mentioned about um, like panels for the wall or something yeah um which stop like the bounce mm. uh soundproof it basically or we just find a different room we could potentially move all this down to the other gym and do it in the downstairs gym do you think that would be better maybe get a third chair in the uh the kitchen set up yeah maybe it'd be too small maybe it'd be even worse <laughs> Well, where, where would you? Yeah, I don't know. I think I think up here is all right for now. But if we do get a third mic, we just need to think of how we're gonna sort it. So if you've been listening to us from episode one, you've seen we've made a couple of investments. We've got a couple of pop shields now to try and improve the sound quality. Um, we are gonna try and get a better setup, and uh, especially with the third microphone. And then we've got uh, one more space for a fourth there as well. So that'd be interesting to see how that worked. It'd probably be fine with a fourth. I can, I've just got a funny feeling. Maybe it's just this side of the room. I don't know. Maybe we need to pra- do an episode on this side of the room. See if, and see if it's just because we're against the wall here. Yeah. And then move the desk forwards. But things that we're going to be doing over the, uh, over the next few episodes and going into the future, um, we're, we are quite bare bones now. It is just a case of like minimal editing. Um, export it straight to mp3 upload it for you guys to listen straight away we just want to be able to pump out as much content as possible um, so we are quite bare bones and minimalistic mm. for now uh, but we, we we do know that quality is important so we are going to be investing in um, like an intro we'll, we'll have an animated intro for you guys who are watching on video as well um, and we will have like a proper introduction to the show and stuff in the future yeah, so it sounds more professional and we'll edit the uh, previous episode or we might just leave the previous leave, episodes leave the them. show leave our them. journey and podcasting yeah leave them leave our, them our progress and how we've grown but this is the, we've digressed here but I think this is important to talk about just like what we want from this podcast was just to give you guys as much good content as possible so if you can forgive us for the lack of intro and the shitty audio that we've got <laughs> and like this bare bones setup in the office and the gym 
and like the clanking of deadlifts outside and you can hear the coaches talking and probably next door is heavy machinery going off like we are in an industrial park and so if you can get past that and you're still listening now then that's much appreciated yeah and then you'll and then obviously in like maybe like 50 100 episodes later you'll find out how, how good we actually are right if we get to 1500 episodes we're gonna do like a big giveaway or something because yeah, that'll yeah. be a huge milestone 1500 listen if we even if we get to 10 <laughs> Even if we get to ten episodes, like I'll I'll be I'll be so happy. Yeah, I reckon we do a hundred. Hundred episodes and we do a giveaway. Yeah, hundred episodes we do a giveaway. Right, so we've got some we've got some um some merch coming soon um for the podcast. We'll have uh, we'll have t shirts, we'll have hoodies, yeah. and if you want one, uh, tune in to the episode ten and I think we might do a live episode. Yeah. And we, we do a live giveaway on, on do the, a live giveaway, yeah. so make sure you tune into that episode. Um, so it's going to be maybe three or four weeks from now because some, some weeks we are doing two episodes. Yeah. Big, big tangent there. Back to the business. Um, it was only in 2015 that I actually opened my own gym, but uh, I was self-employed as a sole trader, so to speak, from 2011. Started coaching people out of parks. It was always a dream for me to be able to open my own facility. Um, and I knew it was going to take a lot of hard work to be able to get to that level. And I think expectations versus reality. Um, people always expect uh, it delivered to them on a plate or expect to be able to get results without putting in hard work. So you've got to treat your business how you treat your trainer. Yeah. And that's kind of my philosophy. And I've always had quite a blue collar work ethic. I've always grinded for what I've, uh, what I've needed, for what I've wanted. Um, I've always worked hard and uh, I've always earned it. It's never just been given to me on a plate. And that's just who I am. And I think that's important uh, if you want to be successful in business or achieve some success, depending on what your perspective is on success. I'll have to excuse the, uh, the heavy deadlifts going on outside. But it adds a bit of character to the show. Yeah, yeah really. definitely. So do you say like it's a mindset then when you start your own business that you did for the, you know, yeah, for the long run, or how, how what, what's your mindset going into starting a business? Mindset's really important. It's not what you expect when you go in. I think you are always expecting things to happen faster or more quickly, mm. and it doesn't, it takes so long. So you've got to have a long-term plan, and I did have a long-term plan from the start, and it wasn't something that I wrote down from day one, but it was definitely something that I always had in my mind uh, from the start, so I think that's important. If you if you want if you want to try and start achieving something in business, you've got to you've got to write down those goals. And when I started to do that and put pen to paper, then things started to happen. And then in two thousand and fifteen, the dream came true. I opened the doors to my own facility, and it's still still been a grind since then. But it was always um, always a massive goal in my journey. Just to be able to tick that off. So you mentioned mindset, and I think uh, you have got to have that, like the right frame of mind to to, to be self-employed in this game, to be um, to to be able to run your own business. It's such a competitive industry. Yeah. Everyone and the mother, or the nan, the nan, the nan, <laughs> the nan's, nan's in there every episode is self-employed and doing something. Mad. There's a lot of crap out there. There's uh, every other person is a qualified personal trainer and self-employed. So you've got to be able to stand out from the crowd. You've got to be able to uh, be unique in this industry as well and offer something different. And make sure you're constantly uh, over delivering as well with your clients. Yeah, and when in terms of um, starting your goals and putting um, what you had in your head onto paper, how how did you formulate them goals? How what did you have like short-term goals? What you want to do now and then? What you want to do, what where you f- expect to be in three years, five years, ten years? Um, I didn't actually formulate like a, a 50 year plan until yeah. about a year and a half ago. Um, and I've been in business almost 10 years now. But when I first started, it was more um, short term goals. Yeah. Setting smaller goals that were more achievable day by day, week by week, or month by month. Um, some of them were financial. I did write down some financial goals, 
Um, and then some goals that were just like getting X amount of clients or, um, you know, getting, become more knowledgeable or finishing a book uh, yeah. on a certain subject or a certain topic. Uh, I was purely just coaching back then as well. If, for those of you who don't know, I did used to coach like 12 to 14 hours pretty much every day uh, when I first started until about two years ago. And then I just switched into this more entrepreneurial role, working in the office most of the time now. And I only coach about probably about eight to 10 hours a week uh, between here and the University of Liverpool. So, I digressed. What's the question? How goals and um, long short term goals and long term yeah. goals. Um so yeah, to answer your question. Short term goals when I first started out, I think, because I knew they were more realistic to achieve. Yeah. Um and now that I've switched into this like entrepreneurial role, if you like, and I'm working more on the strategy of the business and we've developed like a fifty year plan for the business, where we want to go, where I see things go. Um and realistically, how long that's going to take. Yeah. And another thing as well, like, obviously when I started my business last year, like it's a little bit different to yours. Um, I had, like, you and Adam, Danny and Kim helped me a lot to start it and to, you know, get my website, Instagram, all that social media stuff on. Who helped you in your... Um, no one. Nobody? No. I, um, I, I just learned the hard way and made mistakes. Still make mistakes now. But I think they're the most valuable lessons yeah. at the same time. Yeah, yeah it, I just I just I just learned the hard way, I just done it myself, trial and error. Um I was very I'm a very stubborn person for those of you who know me or if you know that. I'm extremely stubborn, so it's just uh I've always had this fire inside of me, I was always driven, um, regardless of how things were received on social media or like, you know, the, there was times where I'd have no likes on anything or no engagement with any of my content yeah. before I even knew the ins and outs of social media marketing or uh, I trying to advertise in general. I remember one of the first things I've done was pay for like 5,000 flyers and I got one client back off it and it's just absolutely no ROI on that. Yeah. Um, I, get, I get a bit like that when I uh, post something on um, Instagram. You know, my like elite thing. I just and sometimes I get no engagement whatsoever, or I will get bots just saying like "cool" or something like that. <laughs> it's just really, it's it's demotivating, but in the same way, it's motivating in the fact that you you want to prove yourself that you can actually do it, and and you want likes to you know because you're doing something well, and not just getting a like a real like hero hero there. If that makes sense. One thing I've learned over the years is that it's not about the likes and it's not about the engagements. That's great. And obviously it makes you feel like there's an ROI in what you're doing. Mm. Um, because you you know, you social media is such a great platform to advertise yourself. If you're thinking about getting into um personal training or the strength biz, you want to open your own gym, whatever it is, um, you've just got to be consistent on social media. Yeah. Like your next big client could just be on the sidelines. Just it, the time that you never posted something. Uh, the other time that you um, you know you were disheartened because someone didn't like your previous post and you deleted it or whatever, uh, that could have been the post that was gonna convert them or that was gonna be the post that made them inquire and then sign up with you. Yeah. And then they could have that could have been the big clients who told five, ten of their friends. Um. So the best advice I think if you're starting out is like really uh, double down on all this free social media that you've got, like all of, all the social media platforms, Facebook and Instagram are the big ones. And you can literally just, you don't have to worry about, people worry so much about like creating um, content and really all you're gonna do is document just like whatever you're doing in your training to start with if you've got no clients. And then you can start to, just literally start to put some good advice out there for people, advice that's proven as well. And don't just start putting shouts out there. So you could literally start your business before you can, if you wanted to be a PT, before you become a PT, you can start your business by posting about yourself and... People do it now. Yeah. yeah you see, I, like, I do it. I put my training up sometimes. It's when it starts off, like for a lot of people, you know, they'll maybe gain a little bit of a following. People will be subscribed to their journey. Um, 
and you see like these Instagram influencers and stuff like that now, people who've got thousands of followers and people who are uh, following their, excuse me, people who are following their journey, the journey, journey, <laughs> the journey, the journey, um, and yeah, uh, you, you could definitely start off just by documenting what you're doing um, and then seeing if that inspires someone else and yeah, then decide what path you want to go down if that's becoming a personal trainer or whatever. Yeah, that's been a couple of times when like um, some family members have said to me like, um, you know, can you do a, a, a plan or something? And I'm just like, I can't because I, 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 I just follow what's on the internet, you know what I mean? And they just ask me instead of researching it themselves. So I think having knowledge in the subject as well as a plan. Yeah, it's important. I think if you're going to be getting into the business, you know, you've got to make sure you've you're well informed. You've got the got the right knowledge, especially if you're going to be passing that on to others, yeah. and others are going to be drawing inspiration from you. You've got to put out good content, but also the right content. Yeah, I think that makes a big difference in in that you need to have different like knowledge avenues and and knowing different programs and and you know different types of workouts, different types of training and stuff before you even be before you become a PT and just having that foundation of knowledge and then build it on build on it with your experience. Yeah, definitely. It takes a lot to get started. Um but at the same time it doesn't like just start. Just start. Uh, it, I say it takes a lot in terms of your commitment to it. Like if you're gonna do it, like go all in. Put all your cards on the table and absolutely go for it. Don't be half in, half out. You know what? One foot in in the pool or one foot in the pond, so to speak. Um, you've got to be all for it. You've got to be all for it. You you shouldn't, especially if you've if you've got like a full time job and uh, you're thinking about doing this on the side, then you've like you you've got a hustle during the time that you're not working so the time you get in from i don't know five or six from where you get some food you sit down at 7 p.m you seven till 12 or seven till one should be completely dedicated like all the cards on the table yeah. to you know mastering the craft yeah was, whether that's personal training or like how to get into the biz yeah i was about to just ask you that like how what would what would your advice be to people who you know who um who can't afford to go into PT and right now, what what would your advice be? What do you mean by can't afford? So so like can't afford to get so they, No no no. So like they can't afford to quit the job and then start afresh. To would you just say what you've just said or? Yeah, definitely. Like the the time that you're not doing your your day to day, your nine to five. Um, so like you 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 six till ten, you you six till twelve. Whatever it is, like that's the time that you've got to get your grind on, and that's the time that you're going to be doing all your learning. Um, if you if you can't do it, then you, you know you're just making an excuse. I think obviously there's going to be some mitigating circumstances sometimes, something that's stopping you from doing it. If you've got kids, for example, um, but they'll you'll always be able to find time. Start watching Netflix. Um, stop flicking up and down Instagram and Facebook, like it. My, my advice for like new coaches starting is, you know, every time that you go on Facebook or Instagram, you, you're not doing it to, for you to scroll up and down. Like you're going on there for market research purposes or to actually put something up and yeah. um, like engage with your audience. So every time that you're on social media and you're scrolling up and down Instagram and you see a post that's relevant, then comment on it. Like it's exposure. Yeah. Start a conversation with someone. Like that's what, that's what leads to uh, like, Return the town on your business. Yeah, that's what I, I um I found out as well. Like, I mean, I don't get um many like many replies and stuff, but I've had like some professionals just talk to me about like not even having sessions with me, but just talking to me about like if I knew them from school or something, and I'd say, oh, unlucky with your fight or something, or well done with your fight, and they'll just comment back, and then I'm expecting them to one day turn to me and go um i need your help or something you know and i think that's a really important thing it's great yeah. engage with people as well it's great Even like so um, what's it called do you um direct message people or do you just put it on the comments and both yeah yeah if someone engages with my content i'm going to message them immediately like 
uh, you heard about you, everyone else were cold calling and stuff, picking up the phone and ringing a uh, business or an individual uh, to try and, try and sell you your product or service. And the same can be done really easily on social media, even more easily because you don't get that awkwardness on the phone. A lot of people aren't confident to pick the phone up as well. Yeah. You don't have to be in this day and age. No one wants to speak on the phone, but people are quick to message back as well. Um, you don't have to go in with a hard sell. You just start a conversation with them. Hey, how's it going? How's your training going? Um, if you heard about what we're doing at the gym at the moment, don't be going in with such a hard sell. Um, yeah. Just tell them, tell, tell them a little bit about what you're doing. And then if they're interested, then they'll probably inquire. Yeah. So it's more of a, a person-centered approach more than like, I'm like, a hot, like you say, getting a quick book and just saying, I've got this program, sign up now. But yeah. It wouldn't be like that. You try to build a relationship yeah. with the community. Yeah. I think that's really important. It's something that's been integral with um, like my business and the gym here is the building the community. And you've got to make people feel like they're valued and not just a number or like a copy and paste message. Um, you know, there should be still a, a personal level of interaction there. Yeah, do you feel that's why your business has strived so much is that you've, you've focused on the community aspect of it and and yeah. it's more of a, a family, a club more than, Definitely. than just clients? Definitely. Um, instead of being, I think, because our strategy has been so focused on um, having a strong community and like being able to retain uh, clients for like a minimum of two to three years. I think our average client has been here for like two and a half years, yeah. um, which is uncommon in the, in the personal training industry. Uh, if your strategy is focused on just bringing new people in all the time, you're missing the point. Like you've got to, you've got to look at someone's like long term worth yeah. to your business. Uh, so you should definitely be investing in the people who you have in your current client base now. Would you say they're more important than they try yeah. to find new clients all the time? 100%. Yeah. 100%. It, it does take a lot though. Um, it, you, you're going to have to make a lot of sacrifices. Um, when I say sacrifices, I'm talking like your, your social life. There's probably going to be some um, social aspects with family as well that you're going to have to sacrifice. It might even be a case of sacrificing a, a relationship if that's holding you back. Like, if this is truly what you want to do, then don't let anything stop you. Like, uh, you might be you, you might be comfortable in your nine to five now, but are you happy? What you doing? Like, if you're not happy with what you're doing now, then you need to stop, and you need to start seriously, like working on that time. Then when you're not doing your nine to five, your six to twelve, or whatever it is. And then double down, triple down on your passion, whatever it might be. If you're listening to this and you're not interested in personal training, then it doesn't matter. It's the same applies to you. Yeah. But if it is if it is the gym biz, then you should be learning absolutely everything about it as soon as you finish your day job. I feel like even though this is a, like the, the strength business, I think it could that ties into every other aspect Definitely. of business. It doesn't matter like what business it is, and I think that if you um, you don't want to. Like with my business, because I've only just started it, I don't want to be like 40, 50 and, and just regret not doing what I'm doing. You know, if, if I've tried it and it does and it fails, then I'm okay with I'm not okay with it, but I'm more content with it than not doing it at all and yeah. regretting not doing it. And I, and I feel like if people always have that fear not to go into a business because they're, they're in fear of, you know, I don't know, losing out on X amount of money a month or not providing for the family or not, or they can't go out as much and, you know, stuff like that. I think he brought up a good point there about, like, yeah, not being able to make enough money, but it's not all about money. It, I mean, for some for some people it is, but I actually feel sorry for people like that. Like, there's there's a lot more to life than, than just making money, you know? But, um, then, but then on the flip side of that, you've got people who are, you know, got mortgages and they've got absolutely, and they've, yeah. You know, they've got certain, they've got bills to pay. The, the the same people will live beyond their their own means as well. Like these are the people who will have like uh, subscriptions to like different things like uh, magazines, Netflix sites, and like the you know they're not not um, they're not they're not they're not 
they're not micromanaging that side of it. Yeah. But then we'll be quick to complain about losing X amount of money if they started following the passion. Like you can make money out of your passion if you really want to. It just it really depends on um your drive to do it, like what motivation you've got to do it. And it does it does require some balls as well. You've you've got to you've got to take a risk and it's like anything else in life, you know, the risk reward. Like if you don't if you don't take that leap then you're gonna be in this vicious circle um for a long time and will you ever be truly happy? At the end of the day, we're all going the same way. How you get there is our matter of what matters. That's what defines you as a person. I'd rather I'd rather go out, like doing something that I love every day, maybe earning less money, um, than doing a nine to five, working for somebody else, doing something that I don't necessarily want to do or I hate my job, and then like, okay, you've got lots of money, but you're not happy. So what's the point? You go on holiday once a year, and you get one week of happiness. I, I I'm happy every single day because I get out of bed and I know I'm, I'm coming to the gym and I'm living the dream and doing something that I want to do. Yeah, I feel I do feel sorry for people like that and that they work for the whole year to get a week or two off, and and they just look forward to them two weeks. That's a fifty two week fifty two weeks in a year. 52 weeks in a year. 52 yeah. weeks in a year, so you're working 15 weeks flat out just to get two weeks of rest to be content and happy. Sad life. Mm. Sad life. Yeah. If you want to live your life like that, that's fine. Like, we're, you know, not not, not trying to preach too much, but if, then, if you're happy doing that, then that's fine. But I, I, you're probably kidding yourself. Yeah, I think so. Like, if you've got a passion, and I bet, I bet when they're going to be like 50, 60, they're going to go, oh, I should have done that. Oh, why didn't I try this when I was younger? I could be making loads more. Or, say, I keep coming back to the money thing, but it's not about the money. But it, I know it, like, For some people it is. Like, it's, there's absolutely no negative to making money. Yeah. Like, it's, it's great. You know, you can improve your lifestyle. You can reinvest it in your business or your passion. Uh, you can go on holiday, whatever it is. You know, you can treat your kids. You can, you know, treat yourself, treat your family. Um, but it's more the principle that I was talking about. It's yeah. like if you're so focused on trying to make you know a quick buck, trying to make uh, trying to make the money, you're missing the point. Yeah. Like it's more about it's more about like your your journey to like true happiness and like your pursuit of happiness. Yeah. In that respect. Yeah, and I I another thing with like starting a business as well, like. The personality and what you need to you know get out there and just just network as much as you can like going face to face with people like a couple of times i've just got off my own back and went to gym like went to um different gyms and stuff to try and get people i i didn't get any i didn't get any um clients from it so to say but at least they know that sports psychology is a, a thing in in the industry that like for example I went to Next Gen and um, the Paddy's Baddy was there. And if you don't know who Paddy's Baddy is, he's an MMA fighter. Who's a Cage Warriors? Mm. Cage Warriors. So um, <clears throat> I went there to speak to one of my mates who he used to play football with. And he was there, so I just said, oh, it's sports psychology, blah, 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 blah. And he didn't use me, but he went to somebody different. Mm. But at least. I've influenced somebody in mm. a way that they're using sports psychology mm. and and obviously because sports psychology I think it's a very small it's not it's not that popular <laughs> so even though I didn't get an, a client from that I think I've influenced someone to to explore avenues and definitely and, and it might it might come back to me then. it will so, it will like okay it might not work out with the guy that he went to and you're the next person <laughs> so the only like next person he knows of yeah. um i think the the reach there is important like you you know you're getting yourself out there you're getting your name heard you're talking about your passion and the like the importance of it as well for the athlete yeah like, even though i didn't make anything from it i know that at least i feel some satisfaction that sports psychology or sports psychological performance is gonna benefit him in a way yeah and that's what i want as a 
Maybe even if it's not me, if it's somebody else, at least they're <laughs> exploring them avenues. Yeah, that's good. It's a nice philosophy to have. Yeah. Obviously, you'd like the business, um, but it just depends on your perspective. Like people think, you know, if you put something up on social media, it doesn't get likes. There's no comments. Um, that it's a waste, or like you know, you uh, don't bit, you don't sell to someone over the phone or face to face. It's not a waste of time. Like you've you've expanded the reach of your business and your brand. Like it's it's going to be in their heads, like subconsciously or whatever. And when the time's right for that person, or if you know, fit years down the line, that they do need <coughs> service, they're going to be able to. Um, that that that's going to be there you know that, yeah. that's going to be an option so i'd rather be i'd rather be an option for someone yeah. than not even be known yes exactly and yeah. i think that's where a lot of personal trainers and a lot of a lot of gyms do go wrong is that um so focused on like the likes and like um the yeses and people signing up and if they don't then they're looking at it as failure mm. but that's the wrong mindset to have and it can definitely follow it, it can definitely follow businesses yeah. It can definitely be the difference between someone uh, succeeding yeah. in the industry and not, yeah. just based on like their mentality as well. If if they're not uh, if they're not like making sales or whatever, um, sale after sale, or like if they're putting posts up and no one's engaging with them, um, or it's not reaching many people, they'll become like seriously disheartened by that. Yeah. Um, but you need to be able to flip that. You need to take the positive from it. Is that like you put content out. Be consistent with it and like you're reaching like maybe only a small audience like i think we only reach a small audience but okay all right yeah, just for example let's see we're gonna we're gonna look at our podcast analytics that's what we're gonna do we do this on anchor by the way and then we just we just pump it across as many platforms as possible so if you're thinking about doing a podcast get on anchor and then it's just that easy and it just goes across every single platform with a click of a button. Um, we've got 89 total plays all the time, and that's across four episodes. I'm actually quite pleased with that. Today. Yeah, and I thought that'd be a lot lower. That's individual listeners as well, by the way. Yeah. It's individual listeners. That's, if we didn't do this, and we're doing this for an hour once a week, like it's nothing, do you know what I mean? It's just for fun. So it's like eight, 89 people who we may never have reached out to. Have now listened and engaged with our twenty-two point three percent. And they could episode. and they could basically ring tomorrow and ask for a, a quote on whatever. We've had we've had good feedback from the podcast so far, and if you've got any good feedback for us, let us know. Um, and make sure that you hit the play button as many times. As you can. <laughs> Let's get these plays up. <laughs> um, but like the, looking at these analytics, I'm not this hard of listeners straight away. Um, out of those eighty-nine people, like one of them could be one of our next big clients, or you know. Um, Know, like bring something to our business which is complete like a complete game changer or uh, I don't know like the next world champion yeah. in Olympic weightlifting or powerlifting or whatever it is so um so when you started I think an expectation is there then isn't it um what would you say like when, when you started your business what was your expectations because I know people like I know I I went through the the phase of okay I've started my, my business I've putting content out, I should be getting 10, 20 clients. Yeah. I expect it. Well, yeah. I that's, expect this. That's the dream, reality. though. That's yeah. the dream. Yeah. This is like this is the dream versus reality, yeah. or like expectations versus reality. Yeah. You've got to be really realistic with your expectations. There's nothing wrong with being ambitious, um, but it depends. Like, you can be ambitious, but if it doesn't go your way, you've got to be able to take it well. If you take it bad, it can have a bit of a spiral effect, a bit of a negative effect. I mean, they can knock on to other things in, yeah. within the business and your own life as well. Like there's no emotions in business, so you've just got to look at it from like an objective point of view. Like look at the stats, look at what you've been doing or what you could have done better. Yeah. And um, these are the things that you've got to look at, especially when you're starting out. So, so I think the big thing for a lot of people is just like, uh, the best advice I could give to someone is just like be consistent forever, like yeah. for a long period of time. Don't lose that consistency. Like, as I said before, the next big client could have been waiting for that. Like, that one time that you didn't post, that could have been the time of that, that big client you would have got in touch and you didn't post. So, when you thought, like, expectations or when you started your business as um, Danny's uh, Taylor's Fitness, yeah, um, when you were in the park, 
and you were saying you you were only getting a few people. What at what how, point? How did how did that feel? And did it drive you more to, to be where you wanted to be? Or because I know some people if say if they started a business and they'd only get like maybe one seller or one buyer or you know one client yeah. and they go, ah, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore yeah. because they get so disheartened. How how would you help them? It's a good question. Um, I think you've just got to be able to like use that negative and flip it into a positive. Like try and use it as motivation rather than it allowing you, allowing it to set you back. Yeah. Um, if you know you don't have a, if, you know you lose a client or you know you lose the only client that you start with, like it's not the end of the world. You, there's plenty of people out there. There's millions of people in the in this world. Billions of people, like. There, there will be someone who, who needs your service um, it's just being able being able to reach out to these people and the number one way to do that is by expanding your reach and like consistently like meeting new people going to these events like getting in with that circle like yeah. look at look at other people who've done well in the industry like go and speak to them I'm sure they'd be happy to sit down and have a coffee with you if there's anyone if you're listening to this now and you're starting out and you want some free advice, you want to come down here for a coffee and speak to me, then I'm absolutely up for that. You, know, you want to chat with Thomas, because Thomas, uh, in contrast, Thomas is relatively new to the industry. You've been, um, it's the sports psychology side, but it's still part of the fitness industry, so you've been in business for like a year now, isn't it? A year, so, yeah. a year. Um, so you could always ask him about how he started, um, how I started, and go from there. You, it's always like that, that's, that that would be one piece of advice I'd give to my younger self is like try and learn as much as possible from people who'd already done it um, and have been through uh, that journey and I was doing that so to speak online but I really wish I would have sat down in front of people and like had a coffee with them and yeah. try and pick their brains as much as possible my main inspirations and if you didn't listen to episode one my main inspirations uh, at the time were like Joe DeFranco Zach Evan and Shen, I remember Joe DeFranco talking about how he used to just go around uh, different parks and to people's houses with a couple of pieces of gym equipment in his truck. Um, it kind of reminds me of where I started when I was like getting two buses to get to Calderstones Park from my wood um, every week for sometimes no one to turn up. And it was hard, like, you know, you would have that. Um, you know you would have that horrible feeling in your chest and yeah. like you know what's the point in this should i just get a normal job but it really depends on how bad you want it and that's really important like you know how hard are you willing to work how, how much are you willing to put into it like you really if you really want this if you really want this bad enough then you know you've got to put your money where your mouth is and you've got to put the work in yeah a lot of mistakes I see people making a, a lot of uh, failed PTs and there's so, so many like new generations of personal trainers like every year and like they don't last because they're not willing to put the work in yeah. they think that business is just gonna roll up on their plate like it doesn't work like that yeah. I still do 12 to 14 hour shifts every day like I have a, like, what, one maybe one more one and a half more days off per week now, now that I've been in the industry for a while. But I'm still not prepared to sacrifice any more days or hours until we've got to that next level. Yeah. And like, it's more autonomous then. And then we've you got can take another day off. Yeah, maybe take another day, but also like I don't want another day off. I love this. Like, this has been number one passion in life. I couldn't imagine myself doing anything different. Do you feel that like, so isn't your, so your, so you haven't got an end goal of like, I'm gonna work so much throughout my life that I don't have to work. I'm always gonna work. Yeah. Bottom line. Oh, I'll, doors, I'll, are always, doors are always gonna be there. Doors are always gonna be open. I'm always gonna be here. Yeah. I'm never, I'm never gonna walk away from this. Yeah. I've already played that movie in my mind. Like these next fifty years, I'm still gonna be, like, an integral part of the business. I might, there might be a time where, um, I'll step away and do less. Uh, because things will be more automated at that point. I'm like, hopefully, have more hopefully yeah, we, time. you know, we've got more staff and things to run themselves. Yeah. Um, but I think I'll always be, I'll, I love the game and I love the grind and I, I love the hard work. Like, 
it's just ingrained in me, like it's programmed, like that's who I am and I'll always be like that. Don't get me wrong, there's days where I don't want to get out of bed. Like uh, Tuesday morning, for example, and I was just like, nope. But, you know, you still just turn up though, you know, and you gotta get up, get the coffee on and it's fine. Yeah, and I think, uh, coming back to what you were saying about um, getting advice from people, I think that's a very important part of, um, especially as a new, as a beginner like me, and you said you did the hard, the hard way. Yeah. As in that, like, you have to learn everything yourself. I'm not saying like obviously someone's gonna no, no one's gonna spoon feed you how to start a business, but it, I think it does have a big effect on some. It did have a big effect on me is is having people around you to actually ask questions and to start a business. Or you know you can go on. I don't. I'd say go on like YouTube and research it yourself, which is really good. But I don't think it. I think speaking to someone who has experience with it is a is a key part of what I what, when I started my business was having people who had experience of starting it and yeah. talking to them about it. And like you said, there's loads of people out there that will just sit down with you and have a chat, and <clears throat> they they're not gonna just slam the door in your face. Yeah. I think that's a really for me it's a big part of it to get people's experience and try and formulate my own. Definitely. by other people's plans. Definitely. I've put, um, I've put a note here as well, like, um, you know, how to start, what it takes, but what it takes, how to start, advice to my younger self from the dream versus reality. I think we've really covered all that. I've covered it, but I think um, if, if you're, if you're thinking about starting, stop thinking and start doing. Yeah, I, it was about that, um, so I, I applied for a job, I'm, I'm moving to Canada, and I applied for a job, a sports psychology place. And I was on the uh, the guy in an interview and he was like, he was like, I'm not giving you the job. I said, why? He was like, because I can see potential. He actually said, I can see potential in this. Cause I, I started off where you were. Don't, don't just, don't just get, don't work for somebody else. Like work hard for it. Cause he was saying like, I was only on like $50 a week or something, like $200 a month. But after six six months, he, he got like a a hockey like a, a hockey player, a league hockey player, played for the Maple Leafs, and then that just spiraled. And now he's like he's got his own business. He's got like three or four people working for him from literally two hundred dollars. Hard, could that hardly works. pay. Yeah, that works. I started and, in, I started in a park, and now I've got two units, and we've got uh, six six or seven staff. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you've just, you're going to be consistent for a long period of time. And I don't just mean for a week or a month or a year. I'm talking like long term. You need to be at 10, to 20 years. Like that thing I said before, you've got to play that 50 year movie in your mind. Yeah. Like you've got to be consistent for decades. Like, and you might, you, you might be grinding for 10 years and you might have your head down hard for 10 years and still nothing's happening. But the day that you stop doing could have been the day that you, like you had that big break or like that that pivotal moment in your business and it, it completely blew up yeah. after one day that you decided not to work or the one day that you took your foot off the gas. So you think like visualization is a is a major part of keeping yourself motivated? I think everyone who's uh, who's who's in business and has, you know, achieved some sort of success and, you know, has got um, big aspirations to uh, become more successful. And reach out to more people is uh, always it's all part of like strategizing and that is visualization yeah. strategy strategy so it's not just the day to day and it's not just the coaching like you know you have you have got to look ahead and you have got to be able to also um, do your day to day at the same time mm -hmm. you, you can't just get so focused and you know have your head in the clouds so to speak you know you've got to, got to have your hands in the dirt as well yeah and i like the way um like you on the board, I mean you can't see it on the camera, but just behind the camera there's a uh, 2018 targets and you just see loads and loads of ticks. Yeah, I think it's important. Which is really to... good to have goals and, 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 and you have them visualised right in front of you as well. I've been doing this since about 2012, 2013 when I first had like, I first like kind of ignited the fire to open my own facility. I was like, right, I've got to write down goals that I can tick off that are realistic and achievable. 
um, over a 12 month period to be able to take one step closer to open my own gym. And I knew it was going to happen. I didn't think it was going to happen too soon, but I knew it was the next step for me in order to, for, for me to, to grow as a business and a brand. And um, we have like exponentially, it's been ridiculous. So you, if you are starting out, I would definitely suggest just writing down uh, whether it's in your phone or on a piece of paper, like a 12 month, a 12 month goals, months of the goals that you can achieve that are realistic and then try and take as many of those off as possible. And I'm just looking at my board now and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them ticked off out of 12. Um, and we've not finished the year up yet, so we've still got a couple more to do. Some of them aren't going to be attainable right now um, because circumstances change, things change, but you've just got to know what to do when things change and how you respond when things change. It really defines you as like a business person. Readjusting all the time is a really big thing in goal setting too. You know, Definitely. you and and it and it's it's not that it shouldn't be disheartening as well. Like you're readjusting your goals because it just tells that you might if you take a step back, you're gonna take two steps forward. So I think that's really good. Um, so do you do you, would you readjust them? Would you change them or would you? Like, you like, have. You have. Yeah. yeah. Handful of them I've changed, and then some of them we'll leave there. And that for me acts as motivation for the following year's targets if yeah. we don't achieve one for that year. Um, for example, like we've got one there about having like a full line of branded merchandise, and uh, there's no way we're going to have that done by November. But we are starting to make like bigger moves now towards having that. Yeah. So then maybe sometime next year it's going to be more realistic for us to tick that off. Yeah. You know. Um, but yeah, it just um, you, you've regardless of what business you're in, I think regardless of what point you're point you're in in business, you've got to be able to grind. You've got to be able to put the work in, and not just um, not just work smart, but work hard as well. And I think that's a good recipe for success. Mm -hmm. If you think you can like just work smart or just work hard, like you you're gonna miss the point, and you you're not gonna be able to uh, achieve. The level of success that you want to achieve uh, as soon anyway yeah and um so what was how long was that then 40, 48. 46 minutes you did really well then. 48 yeah 48 you did really well i'm trying trying to keep these episodes uh just on 60 minutes long yeah uh, hopefully what we've been speaking about there uh, is it is of interest to you um if you are starting out in the industry and you need some advice then can drop me an email danny at taylorstrengths.co.uk i'll be definitely up for just having a chat and a coffee with you if that's something you want to do and you can learn more about my journey if you want to chat to thomas you can get in touch with thomas as well at um psych info at psycholeap.co.uk you can ask thomas about how his first year in business has been some of the challenges that he's had um but yeah if you've got uh, if you've got any questions about this episode if you're in business or you, you're, you're struggling at this time and you, you know you need some advice or motivation then uh, leave a comment or you can private messages and uh, we'll see what we can do hopefully this podcast listening to you as well and where you come from and where you are now has given them the fire to start start afresh now i want to be able to inspire as many people as possible so <laughs> yeah just guys just like don't become so disheartened when things don't go your way like we'll have we'll have good weeks, bad weeks, good months, bad months, good years, bad years. Um but as long as you respond well when the time is bad, like that really defines you as a person and defines you as a business. Like ha the the steps you take when things don't go don't go right, things go wrong or things go bad, um I think are really important for you to be able to flip it. Yeah. and start to make way for more uh, positive success in your business. Yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't wait to get to that point where after all the work that I've put in, maybe, maybe I thought like I'd get, I'd have more clients than what I do, but if I, if I keep working hard and I keep drafting and I keep, you know, grinding, I know it's going to be worth it in the end, like all the, the what, I've, what I've done so far, hopefully it will, like one day I'll look back and go, there's two two things you can do in the fitness industry um or if you're if you're a coach 
you can decide if you want to continue coaching for the rest of your life that's fine i do a little bit now definitely not as much as what i used to um but you at some point you're gonna to have to get someone to start running the business side of things for you um or you're gonna to have to take a step back and start working on the business side of things more and you're gonna to have to get people in to do the coaching for you you cannot just be a coach and live the life you want to live for the rest of your life and like be truly happy like are you going to be coaching 12 to 14 hours a day when you're 80 years old no so you've got to look at what's more sustainable long term and then just really ask yourself is that what you want to be doing for the next 50 years if you want to coach for 12 to 14 hours a day for the next 50 years that's absolutely fine but at some point you're going to want change at some point you're going to want something more you're going to want more of a return on investment for all the time and the effort that you've been putting in. So get someone to run the business for you or do what I've done, take a step back, work on the business yourself and get someone to do the coaching for you. Yeah. Um, so what would what would be your um, take home message from this podcast? Uh, if, uh, can you round, round the podcast up in a, in a couple of sentences? So... If you're passionate about something, regardless of whether it's in the fitness industry or not, being a coach, then you need to pursue your passion during the time that uh, you're not doing your nine to five job, if you're working at the moment. If you're not working, then you can put all your cards on the table and go full. You can go all in on your passion, but you've got to work hard and you've got to work smart. Like they, they go hand in hand and that's how you'll achieve success. Work smart, work hard. Work smart, success. work hard. Okay, guys, thanks for listening to this episode. You can catch us on iTunes, Spotify, all the various podcast channels. Uh, you can also watch us on IGTV, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and YouTube. We're going to be doing a special giveaway uh, live episode, which should be interesting. Uh, that's going to be live on Facebook or through YouTube. We'll see. Well, I'm on Facebook, maybe. Facebook will be good. We'll maybe try and do one on YouTube as well. We'll see. Um, uh, we'll have our we'll have our merch hopefully next week as well. What what are we gonna do for that special episode? It's Q and A. We'll see, we'll see. We'll have a chat and we'll decide. But until then, guys, if you enjoyed that episode, please like, share, subscribe. If you've got anything that you'd like to um, comment on about that episode, then leave a comment below, and uh, we'll get back to you. Well, also, if you want to, if what subjects you want for us to, uh, to talk about in this podcast, give us a. Um, Give us a message as well. Didn't you put something on, on your story yesterday? What, what? Yeah, one of the next episodes is going to be like a QA. and a so yeah, that'll, that'll be in the next week or so. Decent. Good, good. Okay, thanks for listening to the Bar is Loaded, guys. Thank you. See you Take later. Take it easy. Bye-bye. That was good. I thought that was really, that was really good.